Okay, it looks like we're supposed to be live. Hopefully everybody will get the notification. Um, and then we can have somebody confirm that we've got good audio. Ari on it. And, um... Uh, it's kind of quiet. Can you turn it up? Uh, who's quiet? Uh, you are. Okay, how about now? Is that a little better? One, two, three. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 So, um... That's better. Better. All right. So, uh, welcome to Zerf's channel. Uh, I'm the DM Aaron, and we are running... Uh, we are the Disbursements, and we're running Sword Coast Shenanigans, which is the uh, Dragon of Ice Spire Peak series of adventures, uh, starting with Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Uh, we're into our second session, uh, of which we started right before the Christmas holiday. Um, and uh, so if you're just catching on, that's okay. You didn't miss much, except some shenanigans. But there's probably going to be more, hence the name of the campaign. And uh, again, I'm your DM, Aaron. And we've got with us uh, a new player to our group. Not a new player, just a new player to our group. Uh, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. And you're playing Patherin, is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. Uh, so Patherin is kind of my uh, go-to character. I generated him way back when, in 97, when I used to play 2nd Edition. Um, I don't play 5th often. Uh, I've recently switched from 3.5, so naturally I'm kind of gravitating to my, my go-to character for uh, my Icebreaker 5th. Uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades. He's good at lots, uh, not really great at anything. Um, he knows a lot about stuff, but um, doesn't specialize in many fields. So uh, he likes to be uh, in in ranged combat. You know, um, he uh, he's a, a good leader, but doesn't ever take leadership from. Okay. All right. So, um, also joining us, uh, we've got Nora. Uh, Nora's playing Danley. <clears throat> Danley, um, a water genasi monk. Um, I ended up joining this adventure, um, and pretty much the mates have been um, very um, friendly and um, gotten along pretty well um uh i joined them back at the ship that's where we met um since i uh was um on on a on a on a voyage and um love the sea and the shore um prefer quiet and solitude um my, a lot of my friends are drow and sea elf and um i uh, do understand uh, um, what is it, Elvian? Um, is that is that what it's called? Elvish, Elvish. I'm sorry. Um, and so um, I'm I'm just along on this uh, adventure and pretty much just observing and 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 uh, following the 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 um, crew. You know the I'm sorry, not the crew, but but the the whole adventure tagging along. Okay. So we've also got with us uh, uh, Peter. Peter, you're playing Sir Tarkin. Um, no, no, you're playing. Uh, I am playing Barion. Lord Barion, yes. With Lord Barion, um, I am a noble um, from the uh, Elven uh, Nation, uh, the Sun Elves, I believe. Uh, I have was, um, I've told people that I was on a diplomatic uh, mission to uh, Baldur's Gate. 
Uh, however, in, um, in reality, I am searching for some lost items um, that I was uh, supposed to be guarding or taking care of, care of that were stolen from me. Uh, so I have gone out questing to try to find them. Okay. So we've also got, let's talk about Sir Tarkin now. Sorry about that. So we've got Sir Tarkin, and that's being played by Toby. Yeah, so Tarquin Beaumont, though the second name is taken from his guild for any orphans, childless, nameless people who join the guild get the name Beaumont. He used to be a bit of an urchin living on the streets, a bit of not of a twist, a bit sneaky when he could be. But now he's all about honor and taking the fight head on. All right. But he's newly knighted. He's only had the title of Sir for a week. Oh, okay. And there's a lot of weight on his shoulders, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Okay, so they're also joined by. I'll just give a quick recap of uh, of the NPC that was joining them. Xana Garrick. She's a, a young rock gnome. Uh, kind of pulled y'all together while y'all are on the ship. Uh, spurred y'all on to becoming a group and heading to Fandolin. Um, because there were jobs that needed done there. And um, uh, she's, she says she's from Nomengard, and she's kind of been a little bit reserved about her past. And you could tell there's a little bit of uh, anxiety uh, uh, at the prospect of having to return to Nomengard, uh, which is one of the... Um, items on y'all's agenda and uh but helping to console her or calm her down was uh vera and that's vera is being played by uh michael hey michael uh hi i'm michael also known as Zerif. how y'all doing i'm playing vera uh trial cleric to illustrate uh she is on a sacred ritual where she must go to a place where she is unknown and try to win them over to with her good deeds. So on her travels, she met a bunch of new companions. And she ended up being part of a caravan traveling to uh, Vandalin, where they took on an odd job to save a midwife. Surprisingly, the midwife is being attacked in a tower by a chimera or a manticore. Was it a manticore or a chimera? Manticore. Manticore. Uh, Sir Tarquin uh, tried to pick a fight with it, but Vera wouldn't have it, so she bargained by offering their cart horse in exchange for leaving the midwife alone. And the manticore agreed. And they took the complaining midwife after a series of arguments and so forth back all the way to Fandillon, where she complained some more and we tried to take up the next job. That's about the long and short of it. So, yeah, y'all been uh, getting settled in the Fandillon. And while y'all were, uh, when y'all wake up the next morning for breakfast... Uh, y'all come down and y'all see a half elf who seems to is off who seems to have made it in to town while y'all were away, and also appears to be uh, of the adventuring sort. Uh, the uh, the innkeeper uh, Toblin. 
Toblin Stonehill uh, says, okay, Pothran, uh, uh, here's your breakfast, as he serves him up, and he says, I'll get the rest of y'all your breakfast, too. And uh, Thank you so much. So, yeah, so... Uh, Xana, you see a little glint in her eye as she starts eyeing Pathrin. Um, uh, Vera. And, uh, hey, Vera. She says, uh, she says, Vera, he, he, he looks like he could be a useful member of our group. Why don't you go invite him to join us? And for, uh looks to her left and to her right and just goes, who, me? Yes. She kind of nervously walks up. And uh, uh, she nervously walks up and goes to uh, the gentleman and goes, hello there. Hello. Oh, good morning. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, and she looks back to Zana and see what, what kind of body language she's trying to message she's trying to say to her. Uh, Pathrin's very open and warm and accepting. Uh, Xana calls out. What Vera means is, would you like to sit over here with us and uh, and have breakfast with us? Oh, I see how it is. They bring me out bacon and all of a sudden you want to sit with me, right? Oh, is that what that smell is? Oh, oh no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pathrin grabs his plate and stands up and uh, uh, leads the way for Vera to follow. Toblin calls out, the rest of y'all's bacon is coming up shortly. You hear him calling out from the back. Uh, well met. I'm I'm Pathrin and I don't share bacon. Xana, uh, you see Xana, the, the, a young gnome. Uh, she uh, she reaches out her hand and she's like, I'm Xana and our bacon's on the way that's fine but we're happy if you share your company with us Excellent well I always like to meet new people and I'm just joking about the bacon of course please help yourself <laughs> Xana starts looking and salivating, and she's like, it's okay. Toblin says that our plate's coming soon. And she just kind of settles herself back, and she's, well, why don't the rest of y'all introduce yourself to Pathrin? Hi, Pathrin. Oh. Uh, hi, hi, Pathrin. Um, I'm, I'm Danley. Hey, Danley, great to meet you. Have you guys been to uh, the Miners Exchange here in Fandolin? I'm really excited to check that out. No, I'm just following what the rest of the mates are doing. And so here's a, th this is a, sir, sir, Tarkin. This is uh, Sir Tarquin. Tarquin, I'm sorry. So, well, hello, Sir Tarquin. Uh, yes. A uh, pleasure. And I'll offer a hand. Ah, quite a firm grip. I suppose it matches the hilt of your, that huge sword over your back. Uh, he's carrying a long sword, so no swords on his back. 
He's more quick than strong. Alrighty, I just saw a sword in the picture, that's all. Okay. Yeah, but it's a long sword. The shield is the thing we'll see. It's still strapped to his arm as we're eating breakfast. Potatoes, tomatoes, man. Potatoes, tomatoes. Hey, good fellow. I am Barian Dalban of the uh, Sun Elf. Hello, Barry. So, what is it you're doing in Fandolin? It's uh, Barian to you. Um, I am uh, getting to know the common folk. <laughs> and what do you know? Uh, there's a lot to learn. I am still um, studying. It will take me many years to um, learn many of the nuances of your cultures. I will get back to you in, uh, say, a hundred years. Sounds great. <laughs> You'll learn to tune him out. <laughs> well yeah i'm sure glad uh, i have some people to talk to here i, th I thought i was going to be eating my breakfast all alone so at that point uh toblin brings out breakfast for the rest of you uh, and sets everybody up so everybody's got a plate of food in front of them and uh xana the gnome she's she appears to dive right in, and uh, then she stops, looks up, and then she settles herself back, and then she tries to com comport herself more, and then she you see her sort of be a little bit less voracious when she realizes uh, that she's uh, got company about her, and she you see her all of a sudden change her attitude, and... Uh, and uh, shows st starts to show some restraint. Uh, Vera is totally showing complete restraint while eating her breakfast. But every now and then you'll see her just do a quick glance and just properly eat your breakfast. Maintain her composure. Kind of shows Anna how it's done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tarquin is a weird mix of manners and looks like a street urchin. Like, at one minute, he looks like he's gnawing at a bone. Like, it's the last thing he's ever going to eat. And the other, he's, like, delicately slicing at a stick. Hey, innkeeper, where's my uh, salad fork? What's a salad <laughs> fork? <laughs> nah, you need salad with your hands if you're brave enough. And just uh, watch Sparkwin just pick up a handful of salad and just shove so, it in his mouth. So, uh, Vera looks to the who's ever serving the food. Is that the barkeep or uh, a maid or something? It's uh, Right now it's Toblin. You can hear uh, somebody else in the back in the kitchen. Uh, um. But right now it's uh it's Toblin, the, the innkeeper himself. Uh, Toblin, if you may please, if it's not a bother, can you give me a bowl of hot porridge? Uh sure. He he goes back there. You see him disappear for a while. Did we get paid for our last time? I don't think we got paid for our last time. Hey did y'all get paid like five gold each? Oh yeah. I think I had like two gold, so. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, so, have you guys done anything interesting recently? Uh, we confronted a manticore. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd rather not fight it again. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to go near it either. So Tarquin bravely took on a attack from the Manticore and said, I can do this all day. I evidently couldn't. That sounds Xana, truly heroic. Xana scarfs it, finishes scarfing down her breakfast. She's like, wow, sorry guys, I was so hungry I could eat a horse. And then she looks over at Sertar. Oops, too soon? It's narrowed eyes. I'm just going to slip up the last of my breakfast. With narrowing eyes at it. Because, yeah, too soon. <laughs> I, I give a little prayer to Ed. Our horse. So, um, let me just make sure something real quick. Y'all did still have two other missions that y'all needed to complete. Uh, let's see which ones. Let's go after those dwarves. Were they dwarves? No? Dwarves. dwarves. I think we were going to do yeah. whichever was closer. They're all relatively close. Uh... I thought we were going to do the one where we only had to warn them. I think the doors, right? That's right. I think that was the one y'all said y'all were going to do next. And y'all were going to put off the Nomen Guard last out of... Uh, Concern for Xana. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Which obviously did not need our help. Xana says, guys, I'm sorry I freaked out about Gnomon Guard. Uh, um, if we want to go there today, then let's do that. I, I'm a much better prepared now. I've settled down. Uh, thanks, Vera, uh, Vera for, for helping me calm down. Uh, oh, you, I'm sorry that I pushed hard against going there initially. You're very welcome. Oh, uh, Aaron, by the way, did uh, what's his name? Uh, Tar? Oh, what was the barkeep's name? Oh, Tublin? Tublin, yeah. Is he coming back out with food, or? Yeah, he'll keep. You see him about now. He comes back out with some uh, porridge for you. So, uh, Vera reaches up and tries to grab the porridge, and try to look accidentally like he she spills it all over uh, Varian's uh, Pantio region. His what region? Basically, his groin. Who's groin? Porridge. Who's? Uh, Pete's, Pete's characters. Barry. Barry. We're just gonna call him Barry from now on. <laughs> Crush porridge. <laughs> Are you spilling porridge on my crotch? No, she's gonna look like it's an accident. Oh. Well, I'm gonna need you to do a sleight of hand check. Will do. All right. <laughs> So you do manage to s accidentally spill some porridge on Lord Barry. Um, Lord Barry, what do you do? Porridge. Hmm, you seem to have spilled some porridge. Um, uh, do you want me to take off my pants so you can finish it? I don't know what your customs are in this country. I believe that would be the common thing to do. Oh. <laughs> no, please. Do not what? take your trousers off. And she, she just goes, oh, let me take care of that. And she grabs a bowl and starts just trying to wipe it off by whacking it with the bowl. 
Word choice. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, let's say word. Okay, let's just say what she's really doing. She's just going to rack them. With the bowl or with the spoon or what? Probably either or, just to make it look like she's trying to clean it up. All right, so give me a deception check. All right. And deception's up here. Yeah, uh, Barian, it's quite obvious what that Vera is uh, is being deliberate in trying to thump your jewels. Mm-hmm. And when she hits him, and she just goes, oh, see how annoying a little prick can be? I am very offended um, by your um, behavior. It is very inappropriate. I will ask you to desist, else I will have to tell the town master So Toblin comes along. He starts cleaning up uh, uh, Barian. I'm very uh, apologetic about that. I hope the porridge wasn't too hot. Oh, no, no. It was just perfect. <laughs> you did a very good job. So he starts cleaning up and taking everything away. <laughs> and... Uh... And then he takes it all back to the to the kitchen, starts bussing it back. Tell me more about this dwarven thing you guys were talking about. Apparently, some dwarves um, to the uh, southwest um, need to be warned that the white white dragon is in the neighborhood, and um, it sounds like a simple task. Just go out there, tell them, hey, a white dragon's nearby, and then go back to town and collect our 50 gold pieces. <laughs> it sounds like easy money to me. That's what I thought. I was wondering why they even were paying us for this in the first place. Oh, it's 50 gold to get us to go out in the cold and get killed by a dragon. Have you guys seen this dragon? Not yet. But I'm just assuming they're making it out to be less than powerful as it is. Okay. Yeah. So uh, y'all are going to head to the Dwarven Excavation? Right? Hey. Is that the plan? Yes, yes, right after I clean my trousers. Yeah, you you, uh, you see uh, Toblin uh, come back with a uh, wet cloth oh, it, for it, you. It takes me like a second. Okay. Press digitation. Yeah, he still came back with a cloth and he was going to reach for your crotch and he's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. So then uh, he uh, immediately starts. Uh, I starts... I am used to um, uh, uh, rude people, and I have um, become sk quite skilled at making sure my garments stay clean. <laughs> so um, y'all are gonna end up heading out. To let me make sure. Nope, that's not where you are. No, uh, uh, uh. let's see. This might show you all what's what. What's up the button? So y'all are heading to the Dwarven Excavation, which is over here. Uh, 
So I think that's going to take y'all, what is that? A day. About a day to get there? Over Overland travel? Okay. Not it the is, road? I thought there was a distance mark on this map. It's uh, five, so five miles. So hex is five miles. So Actually, no, miles? y'all should be able to get there within a day, right? Ten miles? Yeah, about ten. We probably get there and back in a day. Half half a day. Yeah. Or so. We can get there. In a day. Yeah, taking it out and coming back is a different thing. Right. Yeah. Plus, we're probably going up the mountain and stuff. There's probably difficult terrain all the time. Yeah. So you think we'll probably reach there by nightfall? Uh, y'all, you might get there like late afternoon, probably, right? Late afternoon, probably. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, y'all are going to head out. Uh, everybody got what they needed from town. Did y'all need to visit any of the places in town before y'all left? Uh, it's nope. still morning. Yeah, y'all are. Yeah, y'all haven't left. Assuming if y'all haven't left town yet. Yes, it's still morning. Uh, Vera is going to check and see if uh, there's still that man uh, yelling at the window from last night. Uh, the other night, you mean the night before? Yeah. Uh, she does it every night, so. Part of her religion. Right. <laughs> yeah. She well, pisses I mean... someone off every night. As part of a religion. Well, yeah, but this, it's morning right now, so you're not going to be pissing anybody off. Well, I was saying probably last night. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me make sure. It's my religion to piss people off. Oh, no, she's just playing a harp. It's not her fault that they don't like the taste of good music. <laughs> What's right. her um, music skill? The harp. No, what's her level? Her performance. How good is she? Terrible performance? Uh, actually, I think it's pretty decent. So, Xana's going to go ahead and say that she's going to stay behind because she's got some oh, it's a three. things yeah, to take three, care of yeah. while in town. Um, that she's going to join y'all when y'all head to Nomen guard, but for now she wants to settle a few things before she before she leaves. So since y'all aren't going straight away to Nomen guard, uh, she'll wait till y'all return and then she'll accompany you to Nomen guard next time. All right. I mean, I'll come deliver the message, but I want an equal cut of the fifty gold. Sounds fair. You can get an equal quote uh, afterwards. Great. You can get an equal cut from the group. Okay. Let's go then. I know this grassland like the back of my hand. Yes, yes. Every everyone should get paid for their due work. That is um normal for uh Commoner, right? Uh, yes, Lord Barry, it is. Do you have much experience with dwarfs? Uh, that's a good question. A good question. I haven't really spent much time with dwarfs. They are, um, they don't really like the elves that much. Ah, I'm really glad long, you have but... that little tidbit of knowledge at any rate. And it's Lord Barry, not Sir Barry. I said Lord. Oh, okay. I thought you said Sir. Never mind. My bad. I should update that. Okay, so um, one of the things that you hear before 
heading out is that y'all are supposed to talk to Dazlin and Norbus. They're the two shield dwarf respecters and business partners. Before we head up? That that's what y'all were told before y'all left town. That they're the ones you gotta warn. Okay. I thought those were we had talked to them before we headed up. Okay, no, okay. Got you. Yeah. Uh there you go. I've updated my name. I am now Lord Barrier. All right. So, uh, um, when, when, when you call someone Lord, you use their first name or last name? You use the title. You just call him my Lord. Ooh, my Lord. I like that. <laughs> uh, I think it might be Lord Dalafan, actually. Okay, so y'all get to y'all are y'all are on the, y'all can see this map, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Y'all see, see me pinging? Yeah, I see it. Yep. All right, all right. Uh, the canyon's rocky walls rise to a height of eighty feet. At the end of the canyon, a twenty-foot high wall of black stone has a broken gate carved into it with one stone door hanging precariously by a hinge and the other door missing. Beyond this open gate in the shadow of a great mound to the east lies a ruined settlement. All is quiet. Looks like something's afoot, guys. Before we go on, I cast uh, Mage Armor. Okay. Uh, I think... Right. I think go ahead. Uh, yeah, Vera's going to go take a look up ahead and see uh, what she can see inside. Whoops. Take a little peek inside. And we lost yeah. Sir Tarkin. Uh, mm, did we? Probably. Well, he did say the weather was getting bad. Mm. So maybe out for a moment, but he may come back. Who knows? Hopefully, he comes hey, back. Did. All right, so uh, there's a bunch of rubble strewn about and uh, not really a whole lot of... Uh, looks like there's a settlement beyond the gate from what you can tell. You can see a few broken structures or the remnants of some structures. Well, it it is a a dig site, right? Uh, so uh, Vera's gonna come back and say, uh, "I I saw a what looks like to be the remnants of a settlement, but all is quiet." Hmm. Can Patherin do an investigation check to search for signs of a struggle? Uh, sure. Where are you going to be looking and checking? I guess at the mouth of the gate. Okay. Yeah, we we haven't even determined where the where the uh, the archaeologists are. They could be in the dig, right? So you don't see a whole lot here, um, but um, it's 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 possible that yeah that they just may be further down. 
uh, further in the the settlement. Like we didn't, we didn't pass any like um, camp encampment or anything coming up here, right? You have not, no. Yeah. So I'm figuring they're probably encamped inside the settlement. So y'all gonna uh, go past the gate? Sounds logical to me. I mean, I also speak dwarvish, so I can shout out if anyone's around. Okay. Do you do you shout out? Dwarvish? Uh, I'm asking my party members if it's wise that I do so. Do you guys think I should shout out? I think we should move in quietly and see if there's any remnants of life first. And if it, all of the coast seems to be clear, maybe we can shout out. Sounds great. I'll watch from behind and give you cover if you need it. I, I am not going in first. I am... Uh... I'm too uh, valuable. Goes, uh, shot at. To, uh, Lord Barry and goes after you, my lord. No, no, no. You go first. You go first. I am too valuable to be shot at. Oh, I sis. I don't want to be rude. You go first. <laughs> Five hours later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you. <laughs> no, you. Okay, so who's going first? Wait, let me try something. I, I think we're all waiting for Nora to go first. No, I came on this voyage to follow follow along. <laughs> uh, you, be my guest uh, after you. I can shout. That's not a problem. All right. Uh, so what are you going to shout out? Uh, Blackburn uh, okay. puts his bow away and draws his dagger and uh, pulls his hood up and starts making his way into the I, I will tell you right now, I'm amazed. There is hell no way I'm going in first. And are you going to call out in Dwarfish? Uh, no, they decided to. They want to check out the place before we call out. So I'm just uh, going to before, sneak in. Uh, Parson uh goes in. Uh, Vera's going to cast Guidance on him. Whoa, what is that? Thank you. Basically, any skill check, you can add a D4 for one roll. Like, yep, for thank like uh, Pathrin's not very familiar with magic, so he's kind of shocked. So as you kind well, of I'm gonna make a stealth check and then just slowly start looking around. All right. Let's see that stealth roll. Okay. Yeah, you know, so he gets to roll a one d four. If he wants to use that. That's a good point. I Do I have to declare it before I roll? Uh, yes. Okay, I'll save it then. All right. So the spell says you can roll the die before or after making the ability check. Oh, okay. Well, then there you go. I will save it. Okay. So from right here, it kind of looks like there's not. This, this building's empty, and from where you're standing, it looks like there's just a whole lot of rubble. Let me just check something real quick. Okay, let's see. It also looks like... There's like a stone well. You can kind of see through the structure, uh, the fallen structure from where you're, from your perspective. There's like a, a well, but it, it looks like it's got some st stones filled it. So it's 
it's not a useful well. I um I I try to sneak in behind him, slowly. Move towards the well then. Okay. Uh, there's not a whole lot here. Y'all are still being quiet and stealthy. Right? Yes, I am. Okay. So far. <laughs> All right, so what are y'all going to do here? Uh, I'll move right up to the well and take a look down. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, it's just all full of rubble. Um, if there was anything here, it's been long since ransacked. Yeah, no problem. Actually, actually, it looks like, uh, it looks like, um, there may have been a uh, the 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 well may have been used as a campfire recently. All right, so I'll uh, head back to the gate and let the other three know it's safe to move in at least up to here. <laughs> I'm so stealth, stealthy; he doesn't even know something behind him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where'd Lord Perry go? <laughs> you first, man. <laughs> Where is going to go up and investigate the well? Is there any uh, anything of religious significance of the fire they set in the well? No, it just looked like a campfire. So nothing out of the ordinary, just a regular campfire. That's right. All right. over here uh lord barry you can kind of hear uh some voices in shuffling over here somewhere i i head back and i'm like there's voices farther in kind of quietly to the other guy well you're the diplomat you go speak with them I don't know what they are. Could you make out the language? I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know what language it was. It was... Maybe a language I don't know? Let me see. What languages do you know? Uh, Elvish, Gnomish, Celestial, and Common. It's not a language that you know. So I'll go up to where he heard it and uh, crouch down and listen. Okay, so uh, let's see. What did you do? Perception twenty one. Uh, you hear? You hear? It sounds like a couple of uh, dwarf. Dwarves talking in Dwarvish. Great. I have common Dwarvish, Elvish, Orc, and Thieves Cant. Uh, you hear them saying something like, hey, did you hear something? 
All right. So when I hear that, I step out into the open and say in Dwarvish, uh, friends approaching. Okay, so you're going to step, like, right here? Is that what you're going to do? Okay. Um, uh, let's see. A um, couple of dwarves kind of step out. They're like, hello. I say, uh... Hello, in Dwarvish. I have some friends with me. Uh, we bring you news. Uh, where are you from? Uh, as far as I know, this news comes from uh, Fandelver. Is that what it is? Fandel Fandelver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fandelver. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yes, uh welcome, welcome. Uh what oh, what is this news? I'm uh, uh you hear them they introduce themselves as na you know the names you've heard Dazlin and uh Norbus. Dazlin, Norbus. Uh you're the ones we're looking for. Great to meet you. I'm Pathran. This is uh Lord Barian, Danley, and Vera. Good day to you, uh sir. It's a pleasure to meet you. Unfortunately, our news is somewhat troubling. It appears a white dragon has been seen in the area. We have been told to come and warn you of the dragon so that you were not attacked unawares. So, um, they're like, so you were chosen because y'all are adventurers to send this message to us? Yes, yes. We would brave going across the countryside in the terror of dragon. We are brave adventurers. I think. Are we adventurers? You look like adventurers. I we try. Well, we're very grateful to you for this message. Um, we would like to take shelter further within this area, uh, in this temple here. But uh, there's just one problem. But it seems like y'all might be able to assist us with this problem. If Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Good luck with that. Would this be a task that common people could do? No, no, definitely. It's something more of uh, requires your skill sets. <laughs> Why, thank you, Master Dwarf. What do you need? Um, we're trying to uh, further excavate this area, and uh, they this this temple here they point towards it um you know the temple entrance you know we've we've explored it somewhat but um and and as you look over you see like a couple of evil grinning statues over here and over here you know i think this one's more broken down hooptied out than the other one um they're life-size granite statues of cloaked dwarves with evil grins and they're like, um, we're, we're trying to explore and excavate this, but there are a couple of uh, ochre jellies inside. And uh, we're just not capable of dealing with that kind of challenge. Ooh, ooh I like jelly. Jelly is, is very delicious. Well... Being the newest member of this party, unfortunately, my say is uh, somewhat less than the rest. 
would you mind giving us a few moments alone so we can uh, speak about it? Sure, sure. But uh, uh, know that we will know that we will also uh, we've got a set of matching sending stones that we will happily uh, give to you in exchange for clearing these ochre jellies. Ah, yes, compensation. Yes, I've, I've heard of that. So yes, we will uh, we'll go back behind our rocks so that y'all can converse. And then you see them, and then you all of a sudden you see some dwarf ears peeking out from the side of the rocks as they both try to as they both try to eagerly uh, eavesdrop on your conversation. One last thing before you go: Who is this a temple to? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If it's irrelevant, that's okay. Um, give me a, give me a uh, religion check. Do we need a religion check when we're asking them? I'm not proficient. Yeah, that's okay. They, they, they're not sure either. Or they're like, uh, they seem to be reluctant. Damn, look at that roll. Yeah. Um, this looks like an old temple of Abathor, the evil dwarven god of greed. Great. Um, not Whoa. only, not, but from what your understanding of dwarven uh, gods, since you rolled so awesomely, I will also tell you that you happen to know that, uh, during solar eclipses, Abathor is typically pleased with sacrifices of blood and gemstones. Oh, very cool. We don't have a solar eclipse coming, do we? Uh, I'm going to need a nature check from you, Lord Barry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dang. Uh, not, for, not for at least another day. Okay, so good for a day. <laughs> <laughs> so once we all gather around to talk, I let them in on the piece of information that I know that uh, this was once a temple to uh, an evil dwarven god who hoards gems. There might be some shiny baubles inside. I'm in for checking it out. What do you think? Let's go. I like jelly. Jelly is very delicious. I've never encountered a jelly. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean when you say jelly, but uh, sounds great. Don't you put jelly on your toast? Or is that only in the oven kingdom? I've never had toast. Is that something oh. that the royalty eats? Um. I'm very sorry, um, sir. I will have to introduce you to toast. Oh, that would be wonderful. What do the rest of you say? Should we go for it or just leave and get our gold from the city? You hear the dwarf scream out, Please don't leave us! Please help us! <laughs> Ooh, maybe, maybe we get a, a, an extra five gold pieces out of this or something. <laughs> I love to help. <clears throat> I too. Okay. So, um, let's see. Well, that settles do. it. All right, Master Dwarf, you have your adventuring party. Great, great. So here's, here's what you need to know. There's a... There's a... Hold on, let me let me make sure that I. Yes, yes, good that. dwarves. We will eat eat your jelly for you, so you don't have to eat it yourself. Do they poop out jelly beans? 
I have to get a beer, folks. I'll be back in three minutes. All right. <laughs> With jelly beans. <laughs> Kind of sounds like we've lost Michael now, too. No. Here. Okay. Just going to <clears throat> investigate. Yeah, Vera's just going to go. After you, my lord. Hello. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Hello. All right, let's see. All right. Yeah, what they tell you is they said there's a main temple just past this. Um, the this foyer. Uh, that was as far as we got before we the ochre jelly drove us off, before we backed off. So be careful, because it's it's just past. Oh, what flavor is okra? Is that like a? Isn't isn't okra a a green vegetable? I've never heard of okra being made into jelly. Hmm. I'm unfamiliar with this as well. Um, could you care to describe an okra jelly? They look like big yellow boogers. But they're big enough to devour a humanoid. And what's the best way to dispatch one? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't be asking for your help. You're the experts here, right? Yes. Good, good, good. Just be very careful. And good luck. We're all counting on you. We'll be behind these rocks. Okay, we're ju we'll just wait for our uh, tank to reconnect. Uh, I don't think the tank is uh, going to reconnect, y'all. <laughs> Sound, sounds like a uh, it sounds like Toby uh, is not coming back. He's got he's got internet instability. He was just able to let me know that it was wigging out and that he wouldn't be rejoining us tonight. No problem. So, um, just for my own peace of mind, what kind of classes do we have here? What kind of whaties? Uh, just classes, just so I know. Oh. Uh. Well, Lord Barry is a sword singer uh, mage, so basically he can deal damage, but he really can't take much damage. So, like a, a blade singer, a monk, and uh, what's the third? Probably the closest thing to a tank is your cleric at this point. And that's Vera? Yeah, she's in medium armor, though. All right, and I'm a rogue ranger, so... Where's uh okay all right so y'all going to proceed? I guess so. Yep. Alrighty. All right. So it looks like there was a once secret door right here. Mhm. Mm Not so secret anymore. Yeah, so let me reveal that for you. Hmm. Well, I thought you were referring to the other secret door. Yeah, there is another not, secret door also. That's it's not, it's not so secret. Yeah. Do I need to do a perception check for that? Or? Uh, no, I'm going to say that y'all were able to easily spot it. Or maybe investigation.
¿Qué pensás de mí? Uh, I am going to slowly open this secret door, see if there's anything in there before it jumps on us. All right, so you kind of open it, and that's as far as you can see. But there's nothing down there, right? No, nothing no. coming down the hallway. Right? No. So I will close. I will close it again. <laughs> okay. No, like, okay. No crew in there. All right. Uh. Is, there, is this the secret passage right here open? Yes, I opened it and I closed it again. Okay. I'm looking for okra jelly. I think Vera's going to look at this altar and study it. I'm going to investigate the passage to the north to make sure that room is clear. Okay, that, that room is clear. So when you study the, give me a perception, Vera, or an investigation. Um, not religion. Uh, sure, you can give me religion. Did they, did they happen to mention how far in this Oprah jelly was? Oh yeah, she doesn't know anything. Okay. I don't see any jelly so far. Do I need to do a perception check? Yes. I'm going to, from my position, ready in action. If a hostile comes into line of sight, I will shoot immediately. Is that is that my third crit tonight? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, you're on fire, man. So what the hell? Uh, I never see crit. Really. So, um, the the limestone altar is blood stained, and then you see a little bit of a, as you're looking at the blood, Vera, you notice a bit of what looks like yellow mucus drips on the uh, altar right in front of you. And then Barry says, up. above you. And that's the where, is above that's where y'all spot the ochre jellies. Above us? Yes. And everybody go ahead and give me initiative. All right. Do I get my ready to action shot? Yes. Oh, this ain't gonna go well at all. Jeez. Oh. I don't think. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, all all uh, jellies are supposed to move like this. This is. Very strange behavior for a jelly. Okay. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. Did everybody get their initiative roll? I believe so, except for Sir Tark one. Right. We establish it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I also made my um, <clears throat> ready to action attack and hit an 11. Uh, an 11? Okay. Which one were you shooting at? Uh, I'm going to say the one at the altar because that's probably where my focus would be. Okay. Right. All right. So go ahead and roll your damage for that. So in order to roll damage, go to the uh, in the in the roll twenty chat. Yeah. Where you rolled for longbow, and it, you know how it says eleven that it shows the eleven, and it says the word longbow in highlight. Yeah. Click that highlighted word, longbow. Okay. 
And so it looks like you rolled uh, an 8 and got plus 3 for the damage. So 11 points of piercing damage. I don't think sneak attack applies, right? <clears throat> or does it? It's a ranger, right? Is he a ranger? I'm a ranger rogue. You're level oh, 2, right? Rogue. Oh, yeah. So it would apply unless it knows that I'm there. Uh, or someone's close to it in combat. Or... Yeah, we're, we're we're next to it. So I okay. It unless it's still on the roof. Is it still on the roof? Yeah, it's on the roof. It's on the ceiling. Oh. So is it ten, like ten, more than five feet away from us? Let me double check the the ceilings are ten feet high. Ten feet. So I think that five feet. Would... Yeah, it has to be five feet away. I think that might. So technically... if you're five feet tall, then it's only five feet away. Yeah, I think it's still technically only five feet away. Okay. Yeah. So. So that would be 14 damage, right? Yeah. Pier piercing damage. Right. Uh... Okay. So, yeah, the, your, your first, uh, as your ready to action strikes the, the ochre jelly. Uh, Vera, just as you notice the, the, the gloop uh, fall in front of you that you hear the arrows zip upwards right towards uh, above your head as Pothron lets loose his arrow. On the ceiling! And Pothron, it's your turn again now that we're in initiative. Great. Stick another arrow in it. Yep, I'm just trying to think of uh, what's the best way to do it. Okay, first let's shoot again. Man, this guy's on fire today. That will hit. Another 14. Piercing. Yeah. Okay. Um... And then I will take uh, my move action. And go right to there, and that's my turn. All right. So, the leftmost orca jelly uh, plops down in front of Lord Barry and Danley. And... Let's see. One, two, Danley, three, four, Lord Barry. Lord Barry is going to attack you. It's all that porridge on his pants. They smell it. Mmm, porridge. Yeah, I pressed it to say that. It's not in there anymore. So a 13. A 13 misses. Okay. And... I think this jelly just tried to swipe at me. Uh, next is Danley. Danley, you see this ochre jelly plop right in front of you and take a swipe at Lord Barry. It just barely missed him, right? Mm -hmm. mm, I would say barely, but yeah, I missed him. It would have hit if it wasn't for your mage armor, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Okay, but maybe my age armor is protecting me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danley, it's your turn. Uh, I want to dash. Step up. Uh, step, use. Uh, can I use Step of the Wind? And dash? Aren't you right there? 
Yeah. So I can run from it? Oh, you're running. Uh, you're get, yeah, but when you get an opportunity attack or a step of winning, dis oh. So you disengage and then you move. If you want to break combat. Yeah. Don't have to disengage, but. Oh. It's, yes. If you oh, disengage. Give you a free so, disengage. Yeah. Okay, so best to disengage. And what I do, just step away from it? Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. My action. So I have to take an action. Um, can I just? Well, it's right in front of me, right? So can I just smack it with my staff? Okay, smack it with my staff, and then just get away from it. Now, now for the, it, do I go by speed? I don't have to. What does it say? It's doubled. Is that just for jump distance for the double, or I have forty speed? I mean, do I? Do I have it? Yep. So what do you want to do first? Are you going to attack it or do you want to not attack? I smacked it with my staff and then I want to run, run away from it. Okay. So if you use your attack action to swing and hit it, then when you move away from it, you're going to provoke an attack of opportunity from it. Uh, she just engaged with the key, right? Yeah, I'm disengaging. So, but I don't have to take the 40, right? Oh, okay. I just, I can just. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I can because you're spending one key point to disengage as a bonus action, you can still tap yet. Okay, so I can go wherever. So attack, and then uh, it's five foot per square, right? So you can go uh, eight squares. So I'll go over here. Two, three. I did already. Okay. Just saying. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hide. I gotta I gotta do my attack first. Okay. So um sorry. Uh yeah. Okay, quarter staff. Oh wow. Awesome. twenty. Yeah. Eight squares, forty. Get right there. Nice. Okay. It was nice knowing you, Lord Barry. <laughs> Is it Varys' turn? Yes, it is. Sorry, I was muted all this time. I thought I was yakking. Oh. Well, I was yakking, but I was muted. <laughs> You're quietly yakking. <laughs> I would like to cast Burning Hands on the jelly. All right. Give me a saving throw of uh, Dex, I believe. A seven. It fails. Yeah, if it doesn't get above a 12, it's going to fail. So that's 14 Same points thing. of fire damage? 14 points of fire damage. Ooh, nice one. All right. Um, the, uh, the yellow booger is starting to, uh, firm up, get hard, crust over, if you will. Thanks for that name, German. <laughs> Become a little more opaque. Lord Barry. Um, Lord Barry starts dancing. The most... 
beautiful dance you can ever see. Well, I'm not looking at direction, so. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna just hear so you're gonna, it's not. A... You're gonna miss. You're gonna miss the performance. Um, my AC is now nineteen. Okay. And I will take the dodge action. All right, that's it then. Will you move or you'll um, stay where you're at? I will move over here, I think. Okay. So this is the ochre jelly that's on Vera that just got roasted and toasted. Um, that was just. So this is, uh, he's going to take another swipe at Vera. So Vera, you, uh, armor class is less than 21? I'm pretty sure it is. All right, so you take a smack from it with four points of bludgeoning and four points of acid damage. So eight Ouch. damage total. Yeah. Oof. Down the 18 points. Help the cleric. It's going to move over here. Um, Did I notice um, anything strange happen when anyone hit the ochre jelly? Uh, like what? Well, um the the um I think it was um Danley, I think. Yeah, I smacked it. Yeah, she smacked, smacked it with, it with her, her quarter staff. With, with the wooden quarter staff? Mm -hmm. With the quarter staff of bird calling. So it is time to comment. The back. quarter staff doesn't look like a disintegrate or anything. I seem to recall something about jellies maybe eating things. Well, like I was trying to point out, her quarterstaff's a magic item, technically. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. Never mind. All right. Path run. Great. So, uh, which of the jellies is on our cleric? Uh, the one that you shot originally. Okay, I will. Um, Did the jelly not try to attack me? This. It's uh, uh it's uh, gonna be its turn soon, after Pathrin. Okay. Oh yeah, thought it had already gone or something. I don't know. It, the turn it, order seems. Yeah, it goes after Pathrin. Pathrin goes first. Okay, let's shoot again. I just don't remember it actually attacked me. It did, but it missed you, remember? Because you're a major armor. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, it missed me because of my... Yeah, 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 I remember. Go on. See, I can't remember five minutes ago. Yeah, that's oh, going to... Yeah. I think I got... Damn, I love these dice. Another 11 yeah. piercing from me. All right, that wipes you're, out... You this ochre jelly. Hey! Yeah, you're probably better off. The, the dice on roll 20 are kind of finicky. Mm -hmm. So now this ochre jelly is going to attack uh, Lord Barry. Yep. That's a crit. Out. So that's twelve and nine is twenty one points of damage, is that right? 
put me down. 21 points of damage. Wait, what's your maximum health? 14. Damn, that's almost massive. Mm -hmm. Nearly one killed me. How much damage was still? 21? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's safe. 28 would have killed me. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Damn it, roll 20. Why, <laughs> what's with those two ones? <laughs> those two ones on the damage. Rolling 2d6, and I got a 1 and a 1. I'm going to switch to D&D Beyond. Oh. Hold on. Let me, let me redo that. Thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the idea, of, uh, Patrick. Let me... Yeah, I mean, anything for experience points. I get paid in experience points, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So he's going to re-roll the damage. Oh, my gosh. Nice knowing you, Pete. Oh, it's, it's a GM roll, so you're not seeing it. Oh, okay. did John not see the damage? Sorry. I, I guess it's set to GM only. Yeah, it's set to GM only. We haven't seen any. Shit. All right. So, yeah. I. Uh... Anyways, I was just rolling it just to screw with y'all. No. Uh oh <laughs> <laughs> But if it wasn't even showing on y'all's screen, then never mind. The funny thing is, it said roll 2d6, and I got a 1 and a 1 again. On D and D Beyond, yes. Even D and D Beyond rejects you. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's see. Uh so so Lord Barry's down. Uh now it's Danley's turn. And then Vera's right after. Uh. Hmm. Uh. Can, I'll, I'll, okay, hold up. So, uh, can I uh, run to it, uh, punch it, and then run back? Uh, uh, disengage again. Yeah, it will take another one of your uh, key points. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I want to mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna so do. You'll do um, quarterstaff again. No monk. Monk unarmed. Okay. So an eight. Was that a uh, one? Ow. Oh. No, it was a three. Okay, so the eight still hits. And that's five bludgeoning damage. I run up, I hit it, run back, same spot. Um Yeah. Um Yeah. And uh Yeah, you still manage to hit it. Do some damage to it. And then you run away from it. And yeah, you did five points of damage to it. Okay. All right. Nice. That's like uh, the only Bruce Lee joke that I know. Do you guys know the Bruce G Bruce Lee joke that I know? No. What's the Bruce Lee joke? What no. What's Bruce Lee's favorite thing to drink? What? A <laughs> That's all I got. He doesn't like Hawaiian punch. Oh, damn. <laughs> all right. So uh, <laughs> next is uh, Vera. Vera is going to do sacred flame on the jelly. Okay. And you had to beat a twelve. And that's a dex. dex is that a dex save? Yeah. Yes. 
That was a five. Yay. Six damage. As this uh, radiant uh, light engulfs it. All right. So, so the uh, jelly starts to solidify again against this uh, radiation. He starts oh, to see it become a little bit more opaque. Little crust forms we're... on one side. So we're doing these jokes again. Okay. Hey, man, if you're going to keep burning the, the boogers, then hell yeah. Well, technically it was radiant damage, but okay. <laughs> it's a flame versus a microwave. Whatever, man. <laughs> Either <laughs> way it got cooked. <laughs> Either way it got cooked. What does boogers have? What does have bo booger in the microwave? <laughs> LP, I don't I'm know. assuming that it's just like egg white since it's kind of protein based, you know? That's I'm more of a fan. Wow. That's and that's and I come to that conclusion totally not because I did any experiments. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally like my boogers uh, raw. <laughs> a flambe. I brought this conversation Blue on booger. myself. Uh, booger uh, brulee. Yeah. This is revenge for the almost TPK in the Star Wars game. We were in. <laughs> so, Lord Barry, we need a death save from you because the cleric is not healing you. This must be. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start calling. Oh, okay, he's down. Yes, oh, yeah, we're gonna start right. nicknaming you Jester, Vera. <laughs> I All right. Totally All right. So uh, one past death save. That's good. Good job. Um, this is the. Uh, let me delete the other one because the other one is the one that uh, is off the board. So this is the one that. Um, he's gonna go over here to Parthon. An attack. All right, so let's see if I can do this from roll 20. A 19. Man, I need to turn off the freaking hidden... Stealth rolls? Stealth rolls. Anyways, that yeah, was a 19. That. That's like a monster by monster. That's a hit. My AC is 14. It might be. That's what kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, a 19 hits you. Uh, okay, so let's do the damage. Eleven points of bludgeoning plus four points of acid damage. Oh, sh that puts me at zero directly. Oh, all right. Good thing I dove in front of the cleric, or that would have been to the cleric. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're going now it's your turn but since you're down we're going to need you to make a death saving throw yeah one moment just let me update my hit point Mm -hmm. You guys are still there. How do I roll for a death save on here now? Hmm. Click it or? I think so. No, clicking it just takes me to HP management. Hmm. Yeah, I don't use that website. So I'm uh, let's see. There we go. You registered a 12. Got it. So that's a save. Danley. Uh, 
you have an ochre jelly here that has taken down two of your buddies. Is that all of your key points that you used up? Yeah, I only have So two. typically, uh, what the other thing the monk can do is you can attack with like your quarter staff as an action, but then also as a bonus action, you can attack with your monk unarmed defense, uh, unarmed attack, strike, unarmed strike. So that's a that's a way for you to get two attacks in. Uh, also, that'll use your action do you have uh, any throwing weapons? She might have darts. I have darts. Yeah, so I don't should... know how. Should I try a dart? Yeah, you can See just throw happened. a dart and stay for stay far away and just and not move and just throw a dart at it. Okay, so I'll do that. An eight just hits. Nice. Four points of piercing damage. Let me just make sure. They're almost impossible to miss. <laughs> How did I? They I, I guess I lost my character sheet. Sorry. Oh, come on. Uh, okay. Either way, it was how many? How many points did we say? Four. Four, Four. piercing. All right. Okay. And now it's up to Vera. Vera is going to... Here's what she's going to do. For action, she's going to spare the dying on Patrick or Patrick or Patherin. Yay! Yeah, so you get spared the dying. And with her bonus action... She's going to activate Spiritual Weapon. I thought she was going to bonus action Healing Word, Lord Barry. Eh, double, double heal! Alright. Spiritual Weapon pops up on the Ochre Jelly, and that's a 12 to hit, which will hit. Yeah, it's a Dancing Blade. What does that heal do for me? It keeps uh, you at zero. And basically, you don't have to make any death saves. You're, you're, you're stable. stable basically. Thank you. Eight damage. Eight points of force damage to the ochre jelly from the spiritual weapon. Which, let me see if I can find a token for it. Dancing rapier. Glistens like the moonlight. Uh, I know I had some stuff, but I can't find it now. All right. Well, whatever. We'll just. We know where it is. You're not moving it around. You're putting it on the ochre jelly. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Next is Lord Barry. Who is still not stable, right? Right. So we need another death save from Lord Barry. Pete, you there? That was scary. Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, I, I lose connection. Uh, one. Okay. All right. We need a death save from you. That's a failure. One and one. Ooh. Is that right? The count is one and one? Yep. All right. Ochre jelly. Gonna go over here. Um. 
Right. <laughs> Am I covered in ochre goo? Uh, yeah, you're you're you've been slimed. Damn it. One, two, Danley, three, four, Vera. Okay, Danley's about to get punched. Do this. T P K. T P K. So a seventeen to hit, Danley. Ouch. Yep. That hits for ten uh -oh. points of bludgeoning and three points of acid, so thirteen points uh -oh. of damage. Are you still up? Yeah. Okay. Minus 13. Yeah. I have 14. I'm the main. Oh, so oh and you're, to... you're resistant to acid damage, aren't you? Yes, I am. So, oh. so, so what is that? three halved is uh, one point. So 11 points of damage total instead of 13. Okay. Ooh. So... But well, I feel to mention I'm resistant to all damage. <laughs> I dropped two of my party members today, man. So you already tied me. Go for the third. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Danley takes the lick and keeps on ticking. Pothron is stable but unconscious, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, now it's Danley's turn. Danley, you don't have to run anywhere because the ochre jelly's right in front of you. So, short sword? What do y'all think? Did I short sword just hit it with a Short staff? sword would be... I would do a short sword in an arm strike because there's no way to get away from him without risking an attack opportunity. So, so you don't think the uh, the staff would be better than the short sword? Well, I mean, oh, will it do uh, much... Well, the staff will probably be better now I think about it. yeah yeah okay well it's immune it's immune to piercing but not immune it takes half but we don't know that so whatever your character would be most comfortable so. yeah well she's got her she hit it before with her magic uh quarter staff so she that was that only gave you like what was it for yeah it was just because you rolled bad <laughs> it wasn't because it didn't do a good job I mean, if you have a magic weapon, by all means. I'll use the uh, quarter staff then. Okay. So a seven misses. Uh, but you also get your unarmed strike as a bonus action. Sorry about that. That's my unarmed fault. Unarmed strike. What? What is an unarmed, unarmed strike? Monk, monk unarmed strike. You can oh, that okay. Bonus action. A bonus. Okay, so I'll, I'll 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 punch it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and, and roll it. Yeah. So a nine hits for five points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right, Vera. Okay. Uh, could Vera move without risking an opportunity attack? Depends on where you're moving. Over here. Uh, no, you'll you'll have to take the disengage action if you want to do that, and and not get an opportunity attack. You know what? I'm gonna risk it. I think we all risk it. <laughs> uh. Actually, that's a good question about spiritual weapon. Let me look that up real quick. What's can the spiritual question? Weapon, uh, can spiritual weapon be used after using a spell on my action? Yes. Oh, shit. This is the ball action. I am going to... Uh, uh, spiritual you actually weapon use the spiritual weapon first if you want. I'll use the spiritual weapon to attack. Okay. 14 will hit. Uh, second level, I know. Three damage. Okay. And is it still up? Oh, yeah. Inflict wounds. 
All right, that'll hit. Touch that booger. Stick your hands right into that booger. Oh, shit. Yeah. Push the heart. 19 points of necrotic damage. So that booger just got turned black. He now stuck his booger way into it. I'm going to take the icker on my hand, run towards uh, Barry, and use that hand to do a spare to dying on him. <laughs> <laughs> Another right. booger falls from the ceiling. So let's see. So we've got Lord Barry. He needs to make one more death save. And hopefully he doesn't roll a one. Oh, oh no. Uh, so he's trying my that's that's his second fail. That's so a I second got there in fail. So you got there in time to uh, to spare the dying on him. Is that what you're gonna do? Spare the dying. All right. Yes, but, but you're also covered in blood because like my entire rib cage has been busted open and my arms are like halfway across the room. Oh, that's all right. I'm using the dirty hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna have boogers on your insides. Try good luck press digitizing. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a drought cleric. <laughs> I saved your life. Good luck press digitizing that. That mess off of you. Wow. That was a little bit of a nail biter. Yeah, it was. Um, hmm. How many spell slots I got left? So. One on that. Anyways, uh, I got, uh, I got, uh, I got one first level spell and one uh, second level spell since, so I'm going to cure wounds first level on uh, Barry. Seven, so you get seven hit points back. And, oh, thank you, sir. Ma'am. Nice. Thank you, ma'am. And second level on uh, 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 Parth Parthran. How are you doing yep. second level spell? Well, it's level two, right? No. War level two. We only have first level spells still. No, no never mind. That we only seven. have, you know, we only have like three spell slots, right? Whoops. I... Oops. Yeah. Do you well, have any spell uh... slots left? <laughs> For any of these cure wounds? I have one spell slot left, but if you're going to have that attitude, I'll give it to Pathron instead of you. Okay. No, I'm all right. <laughs> I think it. I think it immediately. <laughs> uh, I'm just, just reminding you, it's awfully weird. Yeah, well, I must have misread the sheet. Um, I was looking at today. No, but it makes sense, right? You you've only used that. Oh no, you used a spirit weapon. Yeah, spirit that, weapon that, yeah. Okay, so it was a TPK, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so no, no, spare me. Spare the spare the dying is um is uh cantrip. Cantrip, so that's all right. And yeah, you did the. Well, the inflict wounds is what killed it. Uh, burning hands. Didn't you do burning hands? And yes. Well, the spiritual weapon did some damage too. So, so you used weapon. three for it did about twelve <laughs> damage. I think you're good. You, you right. cast three spells today. 
No, spiritual weapon is a second level spell. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so, um, let's see. We have. Dan Lee would have fucking killed that thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> she could have killed, kept punching it. Yep. She would have kept punching it anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> punch, punch. I don't even know how you got spiritual weapon on your character sheet if you have. Uh, I don't know either. You can blame Roll 20's glitching for that. So, let's see. To bring him back or not to bring him back? So, everybody's everybody's back either way, right? Right. Because we're going to take have to take a long rest anyway. Um, did y'all want to check out that secret door that is obvious on the map? So, correct me if I'm wrong, right now, uh, Lord Barian and I are unconscious? Yes. Are y'all unconscious? None of those, none of those spells worked or what? Well, only one of them worked, so only one of them will be up and the other would still be down. Okay, so Lord is up with his, and then I will be down with mine. And, and technically, if you wanted to balance it out a bit, since he didn't have spiritual weapon, he could have done two more burning hands. Then which would have been the same. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Wait. Right. But either uh, way, I'd be out of spell slots, and guys, one of you would probably be healed, and the other would be down. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Pattern will be down. All right. All right. So y'all are gonna take a long rest in here. Yeah. Unless those dwarves are willing to come over here and heal us or something. Oh, they don't have I anything. Don't, I don't think any of us have any healing potions. Yeah. They're too much. We don't have the money for you. Yeah. Well, I'm taking a long rest then. Yeah. Well, actually, no. Y'all were given a healing potion from the midwife last time. Oh, yeah. But Tarkin yeah. has it. Yeah, the tank has it. Okay. <laughs> the irony of this. <laughs> All this right. is our. Well, we can take a we can take a short rest, and I can take one hit dice healing, right? Okay. I think. <laughs> All right. Um. So y'all take a, a what's that? A a long rest. You have to. I think when you're. At zero. Yeah, yeah, you have to take a long rest. You need a long rest, yeah. All right. So, um, so y'all settle down and take a long rest. Um, are y'all gonna open that uh, secret door? Is one of y'all gonna try that secret door? Uh, which one? The one right here? Yeah. I, I don't think I'll we know from that secret door. I'll give it a try then. I think since y'all are camping out there y'all long enough, y'all figure out that it's a... Uh... So it's oh. a long rest so everybody can restore their max hit points now. And right. also any lost key, lost spell slots. Uh, knock off one of your day's rations. Um... When you check it, you open it up and a bunch of dwarven skulls come out of this column. Um, they just sort of, sort of spill out. Uh huh. But among them, you find 150 gold pieces worth of gems. Excellent. Um, Who's going to write that down? So, while y'all are, um, after your long rest, um, suddenly you uh, you hear a, a ruckus just as Patherin is starting to regain consciousness. 
you hear a ruckus and you you hear the dwarves come running in. Hello, hello, are y'all still in here? We're fine. Everyone's fine. We aren't dead yet. Because I'm just patting a wet rag on uh, Arthon's uh, forehead as he's waking up. Okay. Um, they both start frantically uh, trying to close these doors. They're like, we just saw the white worm flying overhead. Is there another way out that you know of? Uh, the the ochre jellies, they look around and it's like, okay, they see the, the remnants of the boogers. You got rid of the ochre jelly. Thank you. Yeah, they almost got rid of us. Um, so they're like, we haven't really had a chance to explore this area. Uh, so we don't know if there's any other way out. As far as we know, this is the only way out, but let's just hang out here for a while. Maybe if we wait long enough, the dragon will pass. Great. Anything happen while I was out, guys? Oops. Nothing uh, new. Uh, Lord Barry made an ass of himself. That's normal. They're just going to go ahead and they're just going to cower over here behind the uh, altar. And they're going to say, oh, here are those two sto uh, sending stones we promised you. Oh, nice! And they they throw them at uh, Vera from from their from their hiding place behind the altar. Do I notice all the dwarf skulls on the ground that weren't there? Yeah, uh, Vera's standing in the middle of all these dwarf skulls while she was. What happened gems. here, guys? We found them. That's creepy. I think this is normal. I I imagine she's actually plucking the gems out of the eye sockets of the skulls. <laughs> where they've been affixed. Yeah, probably. Oh, you found gems. Cool. That's great. Maybe these dwarves can uh, appraise them for us. Dwarves are known for that. Um... They kind of just, one of them kind of just quickly glances. We'll give you 100 gold pieces for them. They're worth 150. Well, then why do you need us to appraise us? Are you going to do something about the dragon or not? I mean, I'm good with 100. They are dwarven gems. I ain't doing shit about no damn dragon. I just nearly got myself killed by a jelly. How am I hell supposed to take care of a dragon? Um, I explore the rest of the room to make sure that there's no other hidden spots in this huge chamber. All right, give me an investigation check. I was looking around, but I did a very poor job at it. I think I got to <laughs> All right. You find a secret door here. A secret door here, and a secret door here. Find anything. And one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over to that one and see uh, if there's a mechanism or something to open it up. Let's see. I think it opens rather easily.
I'm still seeing double. I think I think there's like six of us in this room or eight of us in this room or something. All right. Really? So well, I rolled I rolled a critical failure on my investigation, so I think I'm seeing double. I see. Yes, I opened the door. Jelly you in your eye. Door, you can kind of see a uh, kind of a dark yeah. passageway. Yeah, you have oh, boogers in your eye. What's this in my eyes? Oh, crit. Boogers. <laughs> hey, guys, I found a passageway leading this way. There's a few other secret doors in this room, too. Uh, Vera's going to look uh, to the left and to the right and see what she can see and see if it leads out. Ooh. So, uh, Patherine, just as soon as you say, hey, guys, there's a secret door here, and you open it, Vera just shoves right past you and goes and checks it out. <laughs> For someone who didn't want to go in first, you're sure a pushy one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I kind of whispered to Patherine, don't get on her bad side, she'll... Spill porridge all over your lap. I whisper back to Lord, she has a good side? <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure. Jokingly, of course. Seeing as she just saved our lives. So, yeah, you don't see much here. I mean, you see what you see. Doorway at the door. end. A door. Uh, Vera goes yells back. There's a door at the end. It may lead out, but I, I'm not sure. Awesome. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I draw my bow and I get her six. All right. Is gonna walk up and open the door and see what's on the other side. All right, is everybody else gonna follow right behind? Well, to, to find right behind. <laughs> Did I lose audio again? No. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, it just got really quiet, and every so, time it gets really y'all quiet, y'all hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, open the door. Fire breath. We all die. Yeah, we open the door. Okay, so as you uh, push this door open, you see like ceiling at the some of the rocks fall a little bit everybody dies we all die um no you you go inside and you see this uh this room it looks like there are three stone bed frames uh, against the east wall like maybe this used to be some sort of uh priest's bed chamber or something Yes, like, here it's good. Okay. like one, so. like one here, one here, and one here. I guess Vera's gonna go in and take a look around. Red frames. Yeah, I check the ceiling before we go in. You're checking what now? The ceiling before we go in. Okay, the, <laughs> the ceiling's clear. Any ochres? <laughs> No, it's it's Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. <laughs> Someone's been eating my jelly. Someone's been eating this. No, this jelly's too hot. This jelly's too cold. <laughs> this, this jelly burns my tongue. <laughs> and this jelly is right here. There we go. I search around the room to see if I can find anything. Apparently, I got to jelly on my eyes. What's this critical one? Critical one. You find a secret door, Lord Bear. I'm rolling, rolling. Uh, Guys, I think there's another exit here. (laughs) I kind of 
Push the door slightly jar. But not enough to open it. Just so the other guys can see. I am standing on the bed. Okay. Uh, I kind of... I kind of yell back, hey, dwarves, you want to come back with us? Uh, we found some beds. Might be safer than behind that sarcophagus thingy, the jiggy. Like, quit yelling. The dragon might hear. We're good here. So, uh, you check the other room, and the other room it looks like it used to be where they uh, would, uh, would uh, get their, the priests would robe, robe up. Um, there are a couple of suits of red leather armor that are all rotted and worthless. Hang on oh. here. Damn. <laughs> I'll check the next door. There's no one else in here. Okay. So you go into here, and you can see this is obviously a a door, a secret door. Uh, it would be a secret if you were coming from the other side, but it's obvious from this side that there's a door there. Mm -hmm. There's a door here, and over here you find the remains of a dwarf in red leather vestments. Uh, with a pickaxe that's all rotted and worthless. Uh, under some of the rubble. Search them. See if there's anything on the corpse besides. Okay. Um, so you find hanging around the neck is a, the... Uh, a tiny jeweled dagger on a silver chain. Um, who was it that had the religion check earlier? That'd be me, Patrick. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Hey guys, I found this. This this looks. Looks like it might be some holy symbol or something. I kind of pass it towards the cleric. So, Patherin, you recognize this right readily since you had made that religion check earlier. Oh, I know what that is. It's the holy symbol of Abathor. It's the holy symbol of Abathor. You notice some dwarvish runes scribbled on it. Uh, the dwarves probably want to check this out. Well, you should be able to read it, right? You know dwarvish. Yeah, I do. I can I can read it. I'll take a quick look. It says greed is good. Uh, this is just some evil piece of junk. Um, the first rule of acquisition. Bar Bar <laughs> Bar Bar Barian uh, knows, though, that this is probably worth uh, still worth some gold pieces. Probably. A... I'm telling you, those dwarves will probably buy it from you. It's probably worth around 50 gold. Yeah, I'm trying to open the secret door here. Okay. Um, let's see. Give me a second. Hold on. Wait. I'm sure it's kind of difficult to know. Wait, can you ask? Darkness is not my friend. <laughs> All right. Any ochres in here? I, I look up the ceiling. No ochres. <laughs> uh, yes, there is. Roll for initiative. Uh. <laughs> Damn you! Why? Ochres. Actually, it's not even on the ceiling. It's on the ground in front of you while you're looking up. 
That's how it is. <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't know where it does that. Right, Stanley. Oh, right. get it, get it, All right. So is that everybody? Yeah. All right. So Danley, you hear Lord Barry scream out, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> I'm gonna die again. Another jelly. I am going to go forward. And you do have the movement to make it to the ochre jelly. And I'm going to smack it with my staff. Oh, okay. Oh, 13. what was that? Yeah, 13 yeah. hits. So go ahead and... Nice. Nine points of bludgeoning damage to the ochre jelly. Now the question is, do you want to use a bonus action to punch it, or do you want to not use a bonus action, or do you want to use a bonus action to disengage and get away from it? I will disengage and get away from it. Okay. I, back to where I was again. <laughs> so I think I think you don't have the full movement at that point, actually. Do you? Actually, I was back here, or was I? I don't remember where I you was. You were right behind Vera, originally. Oh, okay. So you said I don't have the full movement? So... What's your movement? Her movement's 40. 40. So it would have used all her movement to get there. Oh. So... She might have, like, doorway. five to move, but that's about it. Yeah, but it'll still have reach to... Yeah. Okay, well, I'll stay where I'm at. I won't take a movement. Oh, well, you can use the bonus action to smack it, then, if that's what you want to do. That that won't cost you any key points. Okay. Okay, so I'll smack it again? Yeah, with the okay, monk, uh, monk on arm strike. Yeah, I'm going for it. All right, that hits for another six points of blood. I think you spend, I think you spend a key point if you want to hit it another time. Oops. Actually, yeah, she might. Actually, yeah. Can I do, can I do that? Yeah. Do, the use flurry a key. of blows or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah flurry. flurry of blows. Yeah. yeah so that lets you do what? One more, monk. One more, yeah. It lets you do two, but I think the key point burns your bonus action slot. Yeah, yeah. So so she already did one bonus action, so now she gets to take one more bonus action, monk strike. Yeah. That hits. Another four points of bludgeoning. All right. That's ten total for the. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. All right, Lord Barry. Okay, I am also going to take my bonus action to do a blade song. Okay. And instead of dodging this time, I will do. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, I think it's booming blade. Okay. Well, I think I don't think that's it. Think that's well, no, blooming on. that thunder will only come into play if it moves. Yeah. So the thunder won't matter right now. What I need to do is maybe use my short sword for the damage. Yeah, for the attack and the damage, which so eight piercing damage, which is yeah, only half I guess. And I think that's it. 
Okay. Figure out how to use Boom Blade correctly. Basically, what happens is if it moves, if it moves more than five feet. Yeah, but I gotta figure out how to make it move, right? And I gotta figure out how Boom Blade works, whether it lasts any time. Or, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll figure it out eventually. Pathrin, you're up. Okay. I will move to this doorway and then I will take my shot. All right. A 22 will hit. Twelve total. Oops. So Patheran like twists his bow gangster style uh, to, <laughs> to we weave the arrow uh, just past uh, Dan Lee's shoulder and into the jelly. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it registers in the ochre jelly. Uh, Lord Barry and Danley are covered in boogers. Uh, but it's the ochre jelly's turn. Oops, I got click happy. It's the ochre jelly's turn. And he's got 50 50. So 1 2 Barry, 3 4 Danley. He's going to attack Danley. 23. Which does six points of bludgeoning and four points of acid, but that gets reduced to two points of acid. So a total of eight points of damage to Dan Lee. As it pokes her. And now it's Vera's turn. All right, we're just going to walk over here, try to get over here, and she's going to use uh, a, because it worked so well last time, and inflict wounds. I thought it was sacred, fl I thought it was a, uh, uh... I thought what worked well last time was. Uh... Well, I was ultimately the inflict wounds and ended it. No, but I was gonna say the. Uh... What is it? Fan of flames, or why can't I think of the name? Burning, of the burning, burning hands. hands. Yeah. Well, I thought I thought it was the imaginary magic weapon. Or uh, uh... fourteen damage. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say burning hand works worked good last time. Oh, wait, Why you want me you... to get the other players. <laughs> <laughs> so 14 points of necrotic damage to the ochre jelly totally kills it. Yay! I retrieve my arrows from it. All right. I wonder. I got one eye in the ceiling, one eye on the floor. Can I do that? How do I do that? <laughs> Actually, uh, after she casts, touches it, and casts inflicts wounds with her hands on it, she goes to Bar looks at Barry and goes, "Barry, don't you want to give me a congratulatory handshake?" <laughs> yeah. So so I'm like totally covered in acre right now. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like Lewis. good job. Good job. <laughs> and we're we're shaking acre all over the walls. Yeah. yeah well, both of us. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a dog shaking its slime off. Where? And then once I let go of his hand or her hand, I go, I pressed it to take my clothes. 
I just give a solid boot to that door right in front of me and kick right. it open. All right, that door. Uh, yeah, you don't see much here. There, there's yes. nothing here. There's, uh, there's only one door left. And, uh, Virus can go check out that final door. Yeah, like I said, oh, let me just draw. For you, the uh, the dead dwarf right here with the pickaxe. Right. Actually, did I say the pickaxe was rotted? The pickaxe is not rotted. The pickaxe is. Oh. Still usable. Okay. We might need to dig our way out of here. <laughs> Give, give the pickaxe to the dwarves. They can dig, right? I'm like chatting up the dwarves for a couple minutes. Like, hey, how's that dragon with stuff? Can you still hear it? One of them uh, says, yeah. uh, you go peek. Damn it. <laughs> so then he goes out to peek. Ah! After a while, you're, <laughs> ah, ah, he comes running back in. <laughs> and he was like, "Did you see it? No, but I got afraid. I just got afraid." <laughs> Before I head over to that last door with the group, I just want to do an investigate roll on this dwarf as well. Uh, like an insight check. Sure. The, the one who came running back in? Oh. No, he's, oh, he's talking about the dead one. The dead one. Yeah. Oh, the oh, dead yeah. one. Well, that would have been his role anyways. So. Either way. Yeah, yeah, it would have been your role. Um, yeah, he seemed very angry. Yeah, it looked like he died trying to dig his way through. Um... um and it looks like the like the ceiling collapsed in or the ceiling collapsed on him. Yeah. Hmm. And this was the guy with the greed is good holy symbol, right? Around his neck. Right. Can I like examine the wall for any gems that might have been in the wall or any soft spot to another opening or you get the impression from examining this is that uh, if uh, uh, that with uh, it should be relatively easy, although maybe it might take a little bit of time to continue digging out wherever whatever this door was was trying to dig out. All right. Well, once I ascertain that knowledge, I rush off to join my friend. Okay. Hello, darkness, my friend. So, where are y'all checking now? Vera's checking this other door. Yeah. We're not. We're in a hallway that we can't see down. Okay. <laughs> So Vera's gonna check this. Bro, I, 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 I tell, I tell uh, Vera to look down while I look up. We got both covered. All right. <laughs> There's a door over here. I like it, Danley. All right, what are you doing, Vera? 
I'm opening the door. All right. Guess we're going. Okay. There's this room looks partially collapsed. There's nothing of value in here. Okay. So, so we're trapped. I guess I'll go back. No, you're not trapped. Uh, guys, I think I found a weak spot in the wall back there where that dead dwarf was. We should try uh, digging it out. All right. Uh, well, why don't we have the dwarves do that? Since they're probably good at that. Makes sense to me. Uh, what were the dwarves' names again? Don't think I wrote them now. Dazzlin and something. They are uh, Dazzlin and Norbus. And uh, they're like, so the area is clear of ochre jellies? Area is clear of ochre jellies. And we think we may have found like a, a diggable passage in the back. It looks like someone's trying to dig it. And the wall, wall looks east. Uh, and we also got pick if you need it. All right. So they check it out. And they're like, yeah, it might take some time. Um, it might be a back way out to not get eaten by a dragon. All right, well, we should probably take turns, or we might be able to do two at a time. Uh, and if we take turns, hopefully it won't take too long to excavate. Assuming that y'all are all willing to help out. Yeah, no problem. You guys do that, and I'll guard the front door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be the front door. And all of a sudden you hear uh, uh, from the front door. And they're like, oh, no, hurry, the dragon's coming. I can't hear it. it's a loud roar. Yeah. <laughs> y'all find, I, I find a path of popsicle when y'all come back out. Exactly. But I imagine the whole dragon head will be in through the two doors. <laughs> and so, Catherine will be in its mouth. He wanted a mouthful of jelly, so... So y'all start excavating, and uh, and yeah, Patherin, you peek out, and it seems like the coast is clear now. Uh, if there was a dragon, whether they saw it or not, it's no longer there. So y'all are able to excavate, and y'all come to a little opening, and then on the little far side of that opening is another door. Ooh, interesting. Dazzlin and Norbus are like, we'll wait right here. Y'all should check I look, that out. I look, up, I look up for jellies. I'm like, I go to uh, Vera, look down for jellies. Vera <laughs> uh, opens the door. Okay, you're opening it? Yeah. All right. Um, the room is full no, to the room. Dazzling is going to say, if you're opening it, hold on. I'm going to go wait out yeah. here. And you see Dazzling <laughs> kind of come all the way over here. Norman's just like shakes his head. Dazzling, what are you doing there? I thought you they, were digging. They finished digging. They found a door, but I'm going to wait over here so that way they don't. Uh... What? I, I got to get in. You guard the door. Remember, you're the first line of defense if the dragon comes, if you wait out here. Yeah. Now as we might as, need him if there's more jelly. As soon as Pathan leaves, uh, Dazzlin starts closing the door. He ain't taking any chances. The dragon coming in. I like it. Well, unless it's a baby dragon, they can't get to us. There was no way to tell what it was. He was flying in the sky when I saw it. He, he probably saw a buzzard. 
or maybe just a swallow. <laughs> a swallow. Ooh. African or European? I don't know. Oh, wow. All right. So within this area. Ah, oh, shit. That closed my book. Um, you thought we were done, didn't you? There was an. There's an. Uh, here we go. Like a ritual chamber. Over here. Hold on. I'm not clicking. Over here. You see an alcove with a statue of a dwarf with horns. Stares greedily at a glowing green gem in its hands. Over here, there's an alcove, but there's a shattered statue and it's all rubble. No, Chris, looking up at the ceiling, looking on the floor. Give me a perception roll. How hard can these things be to see? From well, from within the hallway, you don't see anything. Oh. But. <laughs> Except Vera's butt. I, I, I start pushing on Vera. <laughs> go, go, go in. It's all clear. She just goes, hey, 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 watch where you where you put your hands. Hey, I am a gentleman. Anyways, uh... yeah. So you'll have to, yeah. Okay. So from there, twelve perception. You don't see anything in the ceiling. Um, and then, like I said, you see a. Hold on. A statue. Oh. I will investigate the destroyed statue or all right. Or would that be another perception? Uh it could be an investigation. If 14. anything fishy happens with the gem, I am ready in action to shoot. If anything fishy happens with the gem. Like it explodes or moves or anything. Okay, so uh, from, yeah. what you, from what you can see, it's just a bunch of disintegrated rubble. Uh, it's yeah. probably about the same uh, quantity of stone as the statue up above. Does it look like it may have like exploded or just fallen apart from old age? It looks like it may have exploded. Yeah, so I'm like, it looks like this one may have exploded. So if you touch the gem in the other one, it might explode too. It might be trapped. I'll, I'm also looking to see if there's a gem in here in this pile. Nope. Is there any uh, part of the statue that looks like the palm of a hand? Yeah, the palm of the hand is where the gem is. That the statue uh, is. I, I'm talking about the broken statue. No, it's all. Would, it's all, it's all rubble, pulverized. Rubble. Would um, you guys give me 15 minutes? Norbus is coming along. Did somebody say there was a gem? Will you guys give me 15 minutes before you start touching gems? Norbus is like a gem. Yeah. Hey now. I wouldn't touch any gems in there. Uh, he it starts may be trying to strength. push past. He starts trying to push past Pathron and Danley to get into the room. I, I let him into the room. He's looking around. Where's this gym? I'm I'm getting ready to leave the room. Am I right? I don't want to get dead. I don't want to get killed in the explosion. I say it's right over there in that statue's hand. Uh, training my I arrow. I have a uh, Aladdin flashback. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like running out. I don't want to die. 
by some crazy dwarf. Uh, Vera, you see um, Norbus. He looks around and he his eyes all of a sudden fixate on the gemstone on the statue over here. I tried to hold him back. Uh, give me a uh... Can I test his strength. Sure. He's not that strong. Are you that strong? She's bright. She's not strong. <laughs> All right. He rolled an 11. Nice. So you old. drag him back out into the corridor. And he's like, what's the problem here? What's going on? It's Man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that thing if I was you. Now that he's can, not can I cast? Go ahead. Can I cast my spell now? What's your spell? Uh, detect magic. Uh, yeah. Well, I I would hope a dwarf would sit still for fifteen minutes. So like, yeah. Once once Vera pushes him back out into the hallway and averts his eyes, he seems to okay. calm down a little bit. Yeah, I, st I start casting detect magic. Okay. You managed to get it off. Um. Yeah, and I checked. I checked the statues for magic, both of them. Yeah, there's no magic on the destroyed pile of rubble, but there's some transmutation, maybe evocation magic coming off of that other statue. The gem seems perfectly fine. I think it's booby trapped. I tell the guys. I think. I think if we touch this, a spell, uh, a spell's going to go off, and it's going to blow up like the one on the other side. Does anyone have a mage hand? Uh, that's a good question. I think I might have it. Um, I do not. Wow, that's a first. I I chose prestidigitation over mage hand. You chose booming blade over mage hand. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, well, I think it's only fair if the dwarf wants the gem. This is his ruins. Let him walk in there and take it. I think that's a great idea. And uh, so we all close the door with, behind him as we leave the door in uh, the dwarf in there. I don't know. I'm not sure if I feel good about that. Like, <laughs> I, I'm good with him having the gem. If he really wants it, but I think we should at least try to disarm the trap before he gets himself killed. Well, my point is, is uh, how long are we going to do this? Um, yeah. How about, how about everyone else leaves the room? And we'll have the archer shoot at the statue. I just want to see what's going to happen. All right. Shoot an arrow at the statue. All right, but then if the if the gem falls, it's mine. That's what I thought. I'm not shooting the statue. Um, All right, dwarf boy, get in there and get your gem. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at it. He's like, "Yeah, I don't have any." What did you? What did you say that? Uh, he looks over at the pile of rubble. He says. What did you say that that uh, holy symbol said? Greed is good. Greed is good. He just kind of sighs, re uh, resigned, resignedly. So he just closes the door. Now we'll figure something out, but I think y'all are right. That thing's gonna blow up if we try to take that gemstone away. Can I make a religion check on that statue? 
Sure. Man, my dice have been killer tonight. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, again, that's probably one of, uh, I don't know, it's like I, it, the description just says that it's the, it's the dwarf with horns. It's a statue of a dwarf right. with horns. And given everything that you know already, that's, yeah, that's probably Abathor, it's probably Trapped, um, it's probably... Right. Yeah. All right. Well, fuck it. You guys want me to shoot that gem out of his hand? I want no part of the gem. You can go and do. Yeah. If, like... if you if 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 you if you want to keep the gem after you get free, if it's still in one piece, I'm all right with you having it. Don't worry. I can heal you afterwards. It's not enough damage for it to do to what I can't heal. So let's take this to a vote. Everyone who's in favor of me shooting the gem out of its hand, say aye. Aye. In favor of? Aye. Norbert All right. says aye. Aye, yeah. All right, let's do this. So I'll take aim and uh, take as long of an aim as I need and as many arrows I need to shoot this gem out of its hand. Okay, give me a... Romeo, one d ten. All right. So it takes you about four rounds and four arrows to shoot it. Um, it explodes in a big, explosive, boom. Um, and it'll probably take you about half a day to sort of sift through the rubble to find that gemstone. <laughs> yeah, I just leave it for the dwarves to do if they want to do. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's safe now, boys. Dazzling comes running. What was that noise? Oh, that was just a dragon. What? He kind of no, backs into I'm the side room. Yeah, uh, we blew up the statue. We blew up the statue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the timing of that. Does it make any holes in the wall? No. No. So, are we going to end this session here or go an extra hour? Uh, let's go an extra 30 minutes, if that's okay. All right. Or so, maybe not quite thirty minutes, but I think we're just going to head back to town. I don't think uh, there's anything else unless we spot dragon. All right, so the so the dwarves thank you. Uh, they tell you that nope, the from the skies look clear, so you should be able to head out just fine. Yep, no problem. Um, if you're ever back in town, uh, just look for Patherin, and we'll we'll have some drinks together. And yeah, I I say the dwarves, nice meeting you. Uh, nice mo meeting you, folks. Um, you you've been interesting. All right, so y'all head out, and uh, when y'all get to the gate over here, let's go ahead and have y'all move y'all's tokens over here, if y'all don't mind. Over here, mm -hmm. uh, y'all can hear in the cavernous canyon uh, a bunch of uh, what sounds like a bunch of orcs approaching. Uh, are they speaking orcish? Yes, I can understand them. They're like, 
This looks like it'd be a good new home for us. Let's just go in, kill whoever the hell is in there. Home sweet home. Guys, Orcish War Party coming. Hide. And I'm afraid this is probably where we're going to end it, isn't it? Is that where y'all want to end it, or do y'all want to battle? Should we end it now? No, I fucked these guys up. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's uh let's get some initiative on the board then. Uh, before we start combat, I did. Huh? I got, I got 21 on stealth before we started. Okay. Come up anyone else beside you? I'm not even sure. Are we really in combat? Yes, we are. Come on. Uh, you have to select your token when you roll initiative. Yes. I'm just going to roll one initiative for Thank all you. of them. All right. So Danley's first. Where are they? Uh, y'all can kind of y'all heard them. They're approaching up here. There's only one way out of this cavern. It's through them. Um. Staff of bird calls. What you gonna do with it? Distract them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they probably want a chicken somewhere, right? Okay. Uh... So I think you can make the sound like sixty feet away. Is that right? Not here. I can click. Where's? Oh, it's on the other page. Is that what it there? Um... Yeah, they're more than 60 uh, feet away right now. Yeah, but depending on where the sound is coming from. Hmm. Yeah, you could make it sound like it's coming from the canyon. top of the canyon. Yeah. Down the bottom of the canyon or... Well, y'all are at the bottom of the canyon, so you. Oh, we are the. Oh, at the top of the canyon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't tell with that picture. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'll say I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they're looking for something to eat, and I don't want for that to be us. So I'll go ahead and do a chicken. Uh, and so they get distracted. All right. So they hear a chicken. Bye. So, um, anybody who wants to do stealth, you'll have advantage for the next round, because Dan Lee just threw a chicken sound to distract them. So the orcs, you hear their ears perk up like, is that a chicken? The other orc says, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Junior, go find that chicken. Be careful what you say. We might get copyright strike on. <laughs> looks like poultry's back on the menu, boys. There, that's sufficiently different enough. So he starts trying to climb... Um... 
to climb the uh, canyon. The canyon wall to to figure out where the hell this damn chicken is. Uh, the rest of them start kind of gathering up. trying to see just toss it down to us when you get it so they're totally focused on this chicken all right patherin i will make my stealth check with advantage all right So I rolled it on um, D and D Beyond with advantage, and it came up as zero. In, yeah. Uh, my dice roll was six plus five is eleven, and sixteen plus five is twenty-one. So I'll use the twenty-one if you 21. don't mind. Okay. So uh, that will be my my bonus action, right? Uh, can you do stealth as a bonus action? As a rogue, I guess you can, right? I'm not sure. I think you can only do that once you're level two rogue. Okay, I'm just a level one rogue, so um, I'll use my uh, movement action then. Okay. So you'll get half your movement while you're stealth. Why do I see zero on the stealth check? It was the he was saying that D and D Beyond kind of screwed the pooch on the. Yeah, it came out as zero. I rolled as a advantage, so it rolls two dice, and then it comes to roll twenty as zero. So that's half my movement there. I'm just standing in the doorway, stealth, uh, getting ready for a shot next turn. All right. Uh, Vera. Yeah, apparently, apparently, the format for that is wrong. Yeah. So Vera, you're up. So, uh, what do I see? I see just these four orcs. Um, yeah. A couple of them are kind of out of view from you. So there's probably more. No, I'm saying a couple are out of view. These two over here, you're, they're out of view from where you're standing, right? Because they started climbing up the... Because they're behind the canyon wall. From your perspective, go over here, hold an action to uh, do a healing word if someone gets uh, seriously injured. So, by doing a healing word, you'll burn the spell slot if you hold an action, regardless of whether it goes off or not. Okay. So, and is that no, something you still want to do? No, I'll hold an action and. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to hold the action for my light crossbow. So if one comes into view of, uh, tries to attack him, I'll, sh I'll shoot him with uh, the light okay. crossbow. Okay, so as soon as somebody tries to attack Patherin, you'll you'll use sure. your, you'll trigger. Okay, your crossbow. Okay, Lord Barry. Um, I will move up by the door quietly. And, um... I will prepare a um, mind sliver on the this one down here. Okay. Uh, for when uh, Patherin um, shoots his arrow. Okay, so you're going to hold mind sliver. Yep. All right. Danley, what are you going to do? Uh, I'll keep distracting him with the chicken. Okay. So you're going to make more chicken sounds. More chicken louse. Yeah, louse chicken sounds. All right. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> so the orcs are like, I hear it. Are you, do you see it up there? The orc finishes climbing up to the top. He's looking around. I don't see shit. Where's this damn chicken at? And they're like, it has to be up there. So they start like moving closer. <laughs> They're just like, 
Let me get up there, too. You probably can't. He starts trying to climb up there to find the game. They're not very bright orcs, are they? No comment. Catherine? <laughs> uh, my turn? Yeah. Okay, I'll move 10 feet while stealth. Uh, you think I have line of sight on that guy from there, or no? Uh, you might. Not. <laughs> Maybe from there, yeah. From yeah. there, you would, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Everybody had a held action anyways, right? So might as well. So this dude has an armor class of 13, so the 22 will hit. Man, my attacks are crazy tonight. That's 14. Oh, shit. For real? Did you just kill him? Well, no. But uh, that's a hell of a lot of damage. Now, you're doing your intelligence save for Mind Sliver? Yep. He, need, he needs to do a DC 13 intelligence save. He rolled an 8. He takes 2 psychic damage. And the next uh, save he does, he gets disadvantage on. So you hear, you hear him cry out in pain. Oh, from the arrow up his ass. And then all of a sudden he says, Oh, my head! And then he collapses and dies. <laughs> good job, good job. So he, uh, you've got a orc face down, ass up, lying lying there. I told you we would fuck these guys up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's dead. Let me mark this guy is dead. Let's just put the big red X on him. Why not? Just keep those fucking chicken sounds going. <laughs> so, Vera, you had a held action that I guess you didn't want to trigger it, right? Not right now, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Well, you might be able to hit the next one if you want. Yeah, I guess I'll go for the next one. So you're going to hold your action, your crossbow again for the next one that appears? Wait, is it my turn? Is it yes, my it turn? is. Uh, 50, 60 feet? It's mm -hmm. a range of... I want to check something real quick. And I'm pretty sure it's not far enough. But I'm going to check it not unless you move. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is far enough. 60 feet. Sacred flame. Okay, but you don't have line of sight view from where oh. you're standing. Unless you, so you, you can move. move. Alright. Sacred flame. Yeah, you'll have to move to, like, right here. Alright. To like over here somewhere. Yeah, right there is good. Four damage. Sacred Flame, that's a deck save? Yeah. A 12. He just makes it. He just makes it. So he's now aware of you. Uh, this is going to end badly. Lord Barry. No, you're good, man. Um, I also go up. I think uh, my stealth is probably goes by now anyways. And I will mind sliver that one. Then. DC 15. Hint save? 15 on hint save? Yeah. Do we even have one like this? I rolled a 17. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah. No, they don't. <laughs> okay. <He says. laughs> All right. Danley. I will continue doing the Stefan Bird calls and keep the other. Well, wait a minute. Okay. So hold up. Back up. So what's happening with that guy, the one that's uh, down at the bottom? Okay, this one's dead. He screamed out in agony when he got shot in the ass and then got a splitting headache and dropped dead. Yeah, that one I know about. No, I'm talking about the this, one still. Uh, this other one is now fully aware. You can't see him, but he's now fully aware of Vera and Lord Barry. Oh, I also want to mention my verbal for um for my mind sliver mm -hmm. is... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Are you sure you're not a bard? A uh, baby. Partially, a little bit. <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah. So that's the deal. So this orc is now fully aware of Vera and Lord Barry. Uh, the other two, you can't really see what they're up to, but they're, you can hear that they still seem to be distracted by chicken sounds. I will keep doing the chicken sounds. But can, can I move out now, though? You can, can I yeah. Come out? Yeah. You can okay, move. I'll, I'll be. But, okay, I guess I don't want, I still don't want right there. Right. Um, I'll do this, uh, the staff of bird calls again. All right. So chicken sounds up, up, up top. <laughs> All right, so Orc up top is going to, uh, he's going to, I guess, investigate. <laughs> he rolled an eight on his investigation. He starts picking up rocks looking for a chicken. Yes, he's looking around for a chicken, even though there's no damn chicken. He's, he's looking right. for the damn chicken. It's uh -oh. not even big rocks either. It's like little pebbles he picks yeah, up. Pebbles. There's no chicken here. The other one climbs up. <laughs> I rolled a nine for that other orc. They're both looking looking for the fucking chicken. Are there any trees or anything? No, I guess not. That's all just No, flat. it's like oh. Roadrunner Canyon, man. Ain't shit. Yeah. So, no. like, what happens is he's looking for pebbles, and the, and the other orc smacks him back <laughs> in the head and goes... Behind a You're rock somewhere. It's under that rock over there. <laughs> no, no, second orc, second orc who rolled a, a one point higher on his intelligence check says, "Look, dumbass, he'll come out if you put some bird seed out." And he pulls out a little bag of bird seed that he happens to have on him, makes a little nice pile, and then sets out a sign: "Free bird seed." <laughs> this will draw it out. <laughs> And he sets up a bunch of traps by a company called Acne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I figured they would be desperately looking, each one, like almost fighting for the chicken, no? Like, it's my chicken. If I find it first, you know. All right. Uh... One of you twos is getting a javelin. Let's see. Uh oh. One, two, Vera, three, four, Lord Barry. Yep. So Vera's getting a javelin. Oh. Actually, yeah, that's a crit. Oh. As a bonus action, you can move up to its speed towards a hostile creature that it can see. So. Actually, it can get right up in your face when it does that javelin. And uh, that's a crit for... Damn. Let me do that again because it didn't register to crit. So 11 points of damage to Vera from that javelin. I'm still up. Okay. And it's going to leave the javelin embedded in you and pull out its great axe. And he screams out, Down here! To the other orcs. Forget the chicken down here! 
fresh meat. I, I do my very best to imitate his vocal pattern. And in Orkish, I say, fresh meat. The chicken's down here. I found the chicken. It's down here. <laughs> Uh, and I shoot. Damn. That's a hit. This fucking bow is unreal, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating or something. <laughs> you are. You're using D&D &D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> so, ten more. All right. Yeah, you're you're screwing this uh, orc up big time. Can All I right. see the orcs on top of the canyon? N no. No. -uh. All right, beer. Right. Here go. Okay. Unless you got any movement or anything you want to do. Sorry. Patrick. No, I'm just trying to cover up the fact that uh, <clears throat> their buddy is screaming that he's in combat. I'm trying to make it seem like he's screaming that he found the chicken instead. I see. <laughs> so if that's a persuasion or whatever, then I'll I can do that. It would be a, it would be a deception check. Okay. This is unreal. I haven't rolled below like a fucking fourteen all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vera, you're up. Uh, I'm going to do an inflict wound on this orc because he's just asking for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Nice. Hey, get that finger out of my ear. <laughs> That's your action. You got any bonus actions you want to do? That's hilarious. Have you guys seen Impractical Jokers? No. It's like a reality comedy show where they make each other do stuff, but I, I won't explain it. It's, it's dirty and disgusting. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is uh, Lord Barry. Okay, I am going to, as bonus action, start my blade song. And then I am going to shocking grasp him. That will hit. 16 hit? Yes. For eight lightning damage? Eight lightning damage destroys him. So I'll put his dead body right here. Yeah, you gotta be careful to lean them. You'll lose initiative. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm like moving them off. All right, Danley. Oh, I keep losing my character sheet. I don't know why. What's happening with this? Keep closing it. No, I I just it just disappears on me. I don't know. It's like the third time this happens. I keep mine up in a separate window. Hey, um, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna go ahead and smack it with my staff. Well, it's dead now. Oh, wait a minute. That's the thing that. <laughs> Beating, hold on, hold a on. <laughs> <laughs> Beating a dead orc. <laughs> Beating a dead orc. Oh, wait, I got an idea. Uh, I just have to wait till my turn. Okay, so keep the, up the chicken noises. I have an idea. Oh, I'll keep keep up the chicken noises. Yeah, I have an idea. I guess those two are still up there. So yeah, I'll keep up. I'll just keep up the chicken noises. Okay, that's my yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Okay, the orcs. I'm gonna go ahead and just give them a quick hint. All right, one of them is comes to the edge. He sees y'all. 
and even me. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you're not stealthed anymore. So he's going to javelin Patherin. Oh shit, that's a crit twenty-five. <laughs> What's no, with you and crits tonight? Everyone's uh, been critting. It's uh eight, nine, ten, eleven points of damage to you, Patherin. As a javelin comes raining down on you from above. And he screams to the other one, Dumbass, forget the chicken! They're slaughtering our buddies down here! Pathrin, you're <laughs> up. Already, huh? Um... And okay. You can't see the other one, but this one's at the edge because he just threw a javelin at you. I'm going to use my move action to go there and grab some cover, and right. then uh, I'll shoot. All right. That my worst. Hit. Uh, I don't believe I get the sneak attack damage on that, so I think it's just five. All right. Okay. Uh, Vera. Uh, hmm. You can see orc number two because he's at the edge. Does he have another javelin in his hand? Not yet. I like to sacred flame. All right. Oh, Eleven. He fails. All right. Takes seven damage. Okay. He screams bloody murder. And Vera's gonna say, "Who screams like a chicken now?" Lord Barry. A 10. You're muted, Pete. Yeah, I was. He takes three second damage. He says, oh, my head. And then he slides down as he falls dead. He just grabs his head, falls forward. I don't, I don't, I don't know why my, my chicken sounds are making people's heads explode. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, do y'all still want me to keep making chicken noises? Or has he already found out that his partner is gone? Yeah, he just saw his partner drop dead. And go sliding down. I mean, he doesn't okay. know what the hell's down there, but it's obvious that something's going on. Okay. Uh, are are these boulders? Oops. Um, okay. So are these like boulders right here? I'm gonna hide between all these boulders right here. All right. You'll take the hide action. Go ahead and roll a stealth. Oh, right here. This one. Yeah. Where did that go? 23. All right. You're hidden pretty good. Okay. There it is. The orc's going to come over here. Looks around. He sees Lord Barry, and he's going to come sliding down. <laughs> Shit. And he slips and he falls. Doing himself a couple of points of damage as he tumbles down and lands prone right in front of you, Lord Barry. That wasn't going to be his action, but he fucked up. 
with his uh, athletics check. So, yeah. I rolled a one on his athletics check to skillfully slide down the canyon wall. So, Patherin, it's your go. The orc is awesome. prone. I so kind of feel sorry for him now. Does that give me an advantage? It actually only gives you disadvantage, hit. believe it or not. Yeah, it's... because it, only if you hit it with a melee weapon will you get advantage. Range weapons will be with disadvantage. Deal. I drop my bow and I grab out... Uh... Um, I will grab out, what do I have? A, I have a dagger. I'll grab my dagger and I'll move into meal. So do I get advantage in melee? Yes. Yes. As if you need it. Can I do, um, do you want me to do two separate rolls so it shows up or should I do another advantage roll? Just do whatever works. We'll just take the first two rolls, however the hell they show. Yeah, don't worry about the man. It's broken, apparently. Just roll twice. Sixteen. And a nineteen. Either way you hit. So, and because I have an ally within five feet, I get my sneak attack, right? Uh, I think it has to be within five feet of him, of your target. Yeah, uh, you get yeah. your sneak attack because you have advantage. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So nine points to the orc. Oops. All right, Vera. All right, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move up. Mm -hmm. Flicked wounds. All right. And I have advantage. All right, that hits. Thirteen damage. Yeah, it's a it's overkill, dead. <laughs> Did you just give him a colonoscopy. <laughs> I was going to use my illusionary harp to uh, summon a dancing chicken to for the followers was my plan. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right. So y'all have killed the uh, attacking orcs. I don't, I don't know about kill. I think murdered. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't even stand a chance. There's an army of them. <gasps> Told yeah. you. We we look down the valley and there's five thousand more. <laughs> oh. So oh, y'all no. get back town and y'all collect the fifty gold pieces for uh from the town master as thanks to um for going on this mission. And that's two hundred that's two hundred you, you conveniently mentioned that it was kind of moot because they spotted the dragon. Uh so they didn't necessarily need y'all to warn them after all. But whatever, fifty bucks is fifty bucks, right? Awesome. I took my forty. I mean, yeah. sorry. We ha I think we have to sell the gems first, maybe. Yeah, y'all are able to s to get back to town and sell them, no problem. At the miners' exchange, nice. I need to check that place out anyway. Yeah, yeah at the miners' exchange. At the miners' exchange, you see, um, oh, what's her name? Hal, Hallie, Hallie. Let me just look up her name. Let me just look up her name. Yeah, Halia Thornton. And who is she? 
She's Guildmaster of the Fandolin's Minor Exchange. Human, female. And yeah, she uh, she takes your... She trades it in for you, straight up exchange. So y'all are able to convert awesome. it and uh, get the gold. So, so that would be 40 each, I think. Yeah. If it's 200 divided by 5. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the session now, I think. So you all managed to get back to town, get a long rest in, uh, convert those gems into gold. Love, love. And uh, when you all come back next time, it sounds like you all will be visiting Nomengard. All right. So that's it for the stream. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good game. Bye. Good to meet you guys. Bye. Nice having you all. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you.